People are saying it's expensive to get into model railroading nowadays. I disagree. I picked up this set here for 15 bucks at a garage sale. It's made in 1982. It's an entry level set, of course, but if you're gonna get into model railroading, you get in at the entry level, not the pro level. I'm gonna show you how to get this set, repair the loco, get the cars running, get the track fixed up, get yourself model railroading for, you know, less than 50 bucks with everything, all the materials and stuff like that you need. Let's get started. Now, when you get these locomotives that have been stored for a really long time, these wheels in here accumulate a fantastic amount of dirt. And since these wheels are brass, they also tarnish. These two brass wheels on this side are picking up power from one of the rails. And these two brass wheels on this side are picking up power on the other side. And this locomotive, it's, it doesn't run at all because the wheels are so filthy. So you've got to clean these wheels. Now, there's some people out there that'll tell you to lay a paper towel across the tracks and put some isopropyl alcohol or some mineral spirits on it and hold the locomotive up and turn it on and spin it. Well, that only works if you have an eight-wheel drive locomotive. How many, how many wheels drive on this? Well, you, you turn them with your finger. See, back here, I can roll these, these back wheels, and I can't roll the fronts. So that's telling me that this is only or two axles are driving. These two back here aren't. So these are gonna have to be cleaned by hand. This is a little cleaning pad that comes out of this tidy track by Woodland Scenic. Clips onto the bottom of these things right here. And I found it to be the absolute best for cleaning these wheels. Some fillers have had a lot of success with using these right here. They're called a fiberglass pencil. They can be purchased through eBay. And then you can get in here and you can scrub on them. But I find that this one works the absolute, the best. It's the, the fastest. You can turn these back ones and that makes it easy to clean it, turn it, clean it, turn it, clean it. But you can't, you can't turn the front ones. So overall, since the gears are, haven't been cleaned and the axles and nothing, you're gonna have to take it apart. Three screws up here, three screws in the back. Once these screws are out, then the truck can be disassembled. This comes off. See right there, there's actually rust and there's also hair or something up inside these trucks. So these have got to be cleaned out. What I like to use to clean these is odorless mineral spirits Q-tips. Put a little bit in this cap right here. And then it's important, you know, since this is laying around and it's open, put it someplace where you can bump it and knock it over. These trucks in here, they've got, hopefully they might have old grease in them down in these axle grooves. You got to clean that out because this metal body right here is also providing a path for the electrical current to flow through. These axle shafts, they have to be very clean also. Polish these up, get any of the grease and old dirt grime off of them. And then we're coming down to the wheels. Now you can do the wheels somewhat with this odorless mineral spirits, but it, it just doesn't do all the way. You can see I'm, you know, coming around them, coming around them. There ain't nothing coming off now. They're still dirty. And that's where this little guy here comes into play at. You hold him down and you've got to, you've got to polish these wheels. So just these couple seconds, you can see how much more cleaner this surface is compared to where I haven't done it at. Start yourself off with just an absolute clean, clean set of wheels. Now that we got the wheels clean, now's an excellent time to come in here with your synthetic oil. Synthetic because it doesn't damage plastics. Typical petroleum products will deteriorate plastic and it'll make it brittle and fall apart. And you want to just a little, little bit, Johnny, just a bit, a little bit less than too much. Now, if you do one truck at a time, you forget which side the brass wheels are on they go on the opposite side backwards opposite brass over here brass over there the rear non-powered trucks pretty straightforward to work on there might be some scoob in this port right here dirt dust now's an excellent time to get it cleaned up also on these tycos this portion right here is called the truck side frame and they have a tendency to break off as you can see it's just got it had a little plastic tit that was slipped through this hole in this truck cover down here, and then they melted over. Well, they're, they're brittle and they, they'll snap off. 
if you still got these laying around, you could take a little bit of, of a CA glue when the truck frame is broken off. You'll see the plastic sticking out between there. Put a little dab on it. You can glue these back on. So I've done CA. I've also used hot glue to hold them on. Handle these little screws. You know, use tweezers if you've got really big fingers. Get all three of them with the thread started before you tighten them down. You gotta have everything lined up. Don't crank them down. Just a little snuggage, because they'll break. Now, we got some super clean wheels all the way around. I cleaned up these plastic ones also. Now we can move on to this power truck. Very similar, remove the three screws. Third screw out, remove the cover for the power truck. Be careful not to, you know, rip it off too fast and then lose, lose everything that's in there. So yeah, yeah. Dirt, dust in here. Here's the side frame, look at this. There is fuzz up in there like you wouldn't believe. Now these wheels, they come out the same way on these Tyco Power Torque trucks. This one in here is called an idler. You, you need that. Those three come out. Now if a guy wanted to get a good look at the way this thing looks up in here, now's a good time. Get a small screwdriver. Come in here between the body and the frame. There's a tit on the side right there. You open that up a little bit. You can roll this out. Here's the little tit sticking through the little hole. Get up between the body and the power truck. These things usually have enough wire on them where you can, you can pull them out of the body. This one, it doesn't. So the wire that's going from this rear truck up to the front truck is underneath this weight. So we gotta pull the weight, which is usually quite hard. Because these tits that are in here, it's been in there all of its life and it is body, body breaking tough if you're not gentle with it. Get underneath there, pry just a little bit. The body's trying to break right there, I can see. You'd almost think that it's glued in, but it's not. Do the same on this side. There, just to break that loose. And then you can get this center weight pulled out. Yep, filth, filth all over it. What is holding there, see? Aha, the wire was twisted up at the back. That's why this didn't want to come out. You little bugger. This rear truck will actually come out the same as the front. Come up underneath of it, give it a little pry, a little twist. And then you could take this body now that it's devoid of any of the electrics. You could wash it, toothbrush, it's a little Dawn soap. This little part right here that rotates, it's got a latch in the front and a latch in the back. If you come in here and just pry it forward some, it'll come off of that latch and then you can fold it off. Right here's the two latches. This motor, it needs to get cleaned up. It's, it's got dust and scub in it. These idler gears right here, this one will come out very gently like. This one's being held in by this one. This one's being held in by this gear right there. Now you can tell this is an older Tyco because this gear's made out of metal. Some of the newer ones, they went to a plastic gear and in order to really service this thing correctly, you've, you've got to get that metal gear off. Get underneath of it with a small screwdriver. Gently pry it. Do not launch it across the room. That can happen, and then you're kind of all done. Get this bull gear off right here. Then you can get this smaller gear out right there. You have to go back to the mineral spirits and the Q-tip and, and give all this a washing. Especially in these areas right here, because hair will get in behind it. You can see this one here. It's it got car carpet fuzz. Ick. Ew. So all that's got to be cleaned out for a successful maintenance schedule or refurbishing on these power torques. One thing I want to point out about these power torque motors is that there's been, they have some revisions on them throughout the years. This is the one that came out of the F7. And this one here comes out of an Alco, either a 430 or a 630. And it could also be used in the GP20s. The hood units will have a truck frame, lower truck frame, that's got a coupler pocket on it. And then this cab unit, F7s, they don't have the coupler pockets on it. And you can also see that the truck side frames have a little different design to them. But what I really wanted to point out is, if you look at this one here, if you want to get in here and service the brushes, 
it almost looks like you could take out this screw and you can slide this one out and then remove the springs and the brushes with this cover still being on. Other power torques, th these are quite a bit harder to get out. They've got such small plastic pieces holding these in that, that it almost makes it where you got to take this whole side cover off in order to get in and service the springs. And I find that kind of to be the easiest way no matter what because if you break these little plastic things, this, this motor is done. Just showing off a couple different designs of the power torque. This one here, the armature shaft, you can see that it's sticking out farther. So this is these have got two different armatures in them. You know, not all power torques are made the same and not all motor shafts and stuff, they're all interchangeable. There's different ones, you know, that are engineered, probably for cost cutting reasons. This one looks to me a lot better than this one, but this one was only made in 1982. And I don't know when this was made because it's in my parts box. Just giving you some info. Classic model trains. How about another edition of classic models? You guys know who this classic model is? If you do, put it down in the comments. Now that this power torque has been stripped down, all the gears and everything's been cleaned up on it, I haven't touched the motor in it at all. This point's a good time to see if the motor itself runs. So you just hook up a transformer power supply to it. Oh, there, uh -huh, see that? That needs lubrication. This shaft right here, armature shaft, and this one here in that brass bushing, that's what creates that squeak. Now a person can solve it by just putting just the tiniest little bit of oil right here and a little bit right over on this side also. Yep, solve that noise. Now a guy could put this all back together and run it that way, but the most important part about maintaining a DC motor is making sure that this commutator and the brushes down inside here are clean. And, and the only way to do that is you've got to disassemble this thing all the way. And this is the most difficult part of the whole job. One of the reasons is because these brushes, they're, they're so small and they're under spring pressure under these right here. And I'm not going to take the spring holders out because I fear that this plastic is going to break. So we're going to take this whole brush holder and armature bushing assembly completely out of it. And I just shot that thing. I just shot that thing across the room. I'm going to have to go search it up. Dang it. That's another one of the downsides of working on these. Rrr. Somebody must love me upstairs because I was able to find that dang thing. This brush holder will come off. You will find the springs and the brushes sitting there. Here's the spring. You can see how small these things are. Holy moly. And the brushes. And here's our armature with the commutator. And that commutator is absolutely filthy. Although it looks like it's made out of uh, nickel instead of brass like some of them. I'm really impressed with this. So once again, you're gonna go back to your odorless mineral spirits and clean all of this scub off of there. This occurs from over oiling. Then it also gives you a chance to clean these shafts off. And you can also get in here and clean up these magnets. <laughs> you can see that these commutators, they're, they're still not very, very clean on there. And that's where these fiberglass pencils come in really quite handy. Till we get something that that shines. Shines like that, yeah. Now, of course, the brush holders themselves, they get they get dirty too. They've got to be cleaned. Take a Q-tip stripper down just a little bit more than normal in the mineral spirits and get inside these brush holders here. See, Ugh. that creates problems. Creates lack of power flow from resistance. And then the brushes themselves, they, they need to be cleaned. And this is also another really dangerous part of lobbing them across the room. Put a little oil down this bearing. Get your springs in. Don't lose them. Don't compress them and let them launch across the room. The brushes, you got to balance them up on the top. And you can see you've got your brushes sitting there. And you got to work on, I can't tip this or nothing like that because these guys will fall off. I'm going to insert the armature shaft into the bushing. Get everything lined up. There we go. See that? Get the motor lined up on the hole, and I think that's it. Yeah, I can turn the motor still. I managed to put this plate on a little upside down. See if we can gently spin it. 
Yeah, there, that, that looks better. Finish up bolting this on here. And that armature and commutator and brushes have been serviced. I wiped the oil off, so I will give it another little, just a tiny taste right there. This one was oiled when we put it together. Oh yeah, that is a lot. That's what service looks like right there. Servicing up these front wheel sets here. I've already cleaned the brass wheels with this little fella right here. But the one downside we've got going on is these things have got what's called traction tires in them. And they're a little O-ring that's sitting in here. And after 30, 40 years, rubber, it deteriorates. There's a groove in this wheel and it, it can't run without the traction tires on it. And traction tires are available from people on eBay and a lot of people sit there and they'll say they use little little hair bands for little girls or they use braces, rubber bands, you know, whatever makes you happy. O-rings will also get the job done. But this is what we're looking at right there. So you take the old one off and get this new one, get it stretched on. And this is of course the best time to do it is when they're off. There's two traction tires. This one here is just an idler because they use the same truck for the four wheel trucks and the six wheel trucks. Now this power truck assembly has been all cleaned, scrubbed up. We're gonna start by getting these gear sets put in over here. Now, I've cleaned these all up off camera because it just goes faster that way. We all know how to clean. I like to use the synthetic grease right here on these shafts. This one, this one, this one. Just the littlest, littlest of bit. Once I got some grease on the shafts, this one goes in. You can see this cup on it right there. That goes down. This bull gear goes on, and then this metal gear will go on the output shaft or the armature. With the washer facing out, that's what holds this bull gear on. You're gonna gently push that in while holding this side of the case so you don't shove the armature through. And it's gonna go on until this washer is just gently it's not even touching this it's it's almost touching it because that's what controls your end play yep i'm liking it then we'll give these gears a light oiling our axles go in like this with all the gears facing all this gear stuff over there give these axles a little oil your truck cover only goes on one way because of the way the bolts are lined up on it. Get the three little fellers in there. Just give them a snug. Don't be cranking down on them. They're not gonna go and, you know, not building a skyscraper here. Now we can put a little oil on these wheel gears. Now I might've got a little dribble, little areas that it doesn't need to be in. I'm just gonna clean it up some because these things don't need a ton of oil all over the place. Bring this cover back up, snap it here, bring it around the front of the motor, push it down. And now we've got our bolster action back. Now that the body's looking super, super nice, we'll get all this back in the body. Line up this one tit on one side over here. Come over here, you gotta spread the body just a little bit. Push it in and get those little holes lined up. Oh sure, yep. Same with the front. Check these, make sure that they're free play. Get this big old weight back in. Yep, and that thing is ready for the track. The wheels on these cars, I was really glad because they had all their wheels and then all their couplers were functioning. Going back to our synthetic oil, lift these wheels away from the truck just a little bit, get down in there and give them a little taste of oil. Both sides, both sides, over here, over here. To get these cars to roll smoothly, even though it's plastic and they don't corrode or rust, but you still want to make it just as easy as you can for the locomotive to pull these down the track. A lot of the introductory train sets came with brass track. And then sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, they switched over to what's referred to as a true steel track. Both of these are frowned upon by the majority of the industry because of the way that they corrode the tops of the rails and, and then they won't conduct electricity. The big dog in the industry right now is this what's called nickel silver track. Now the true steel track looks a lot like nickel silver. The best way a guy can tell is if you have a magnet, the nickel silver track doesn't have any magnetism to it. The true steel track does. Brass track doesn't have any magnetism to them at all. Now if this is what you got, that, that's what you gotta, that's what you gotta, you know, it, it works. You just gotta keep it clean. So here's this tidy track that I was talking about earlier. And this has got some 
pads that go on it that are really good at restoring these tracks. You gotta get it on there and you you gotta push and you gotta work it. You know, there's there's a lot of elbow grease getting put on this track in order to get it clean. So here's unclean true steel, clean true steel. Brass track cleans up a little easier than the true steel, so it's it's better than true steel. And you guy can use both of these, you know, they, they're fine. You just gotta maintain them a little more often. When I was putting this, tr this train set together, I wanted to set up the original loop, and I spent probably an hour cleaning up this true steel. I went as far as after the track was clean, I cleaned the sides of the rail like this, and then I got brand new rail couplers. Once these have been coupled up, and if they get bent around a little bit, they they open up. And then they don't make good contact. And then as the train goes across the top of them, they'll open up. And then you're mad because your train keeps falling off the tracks. Brand new rail connectors are, they're very cheap. Two bucks, three bucks for a pack of 50. Just do yourself a favor and buy some new ones of these. Another important thing is your track, it's got to be tacked down. If you just lay it on the ground and you start running trains around, this is going to open up. It takes almost no force at all to open this track up. It's got to get a board, nail it down, or you're just going to get frustrated and you're not going to want to play model trains. There's little holes in the track specifically made for putting very small track nails down. Get a bag of 100 track nails, a couple of bucks. Track tips to make your layout work as best as it possibly can. Clean the track get new track joiners. Here's about the best creep I can get out of it. it. It's not a slow, slow performer at all. High speed performance, yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, that's easy enough. Sure, looks great on that big layout. Let's put it on a little layout. Let's set up the original track. I, I pinned it, I bought a piece of inch and a half rigid foam, that pink stuff. Put a white sheet over it so it looked pretty. I, I used little track nails push them down to the foam with my fingers to hold everything together so I would have an enjoyable experience with it. Let's check it out. So here's pretty much what the entire set would look like. Why they decided to put that trestle bridge in there, it's kind of beyond me, because I did the math on it. This bridge has a one and a half inch rise in only 24 inches, which comes out to a six and a quarter percent rise. And I gotta tell you, that, that's too much. That is way too much of a rise. I come up with this theory that perhaps maybe the reason why a lot of these locomotives died back in the days as we were a kid, if you had an over and under set or any kind of set that had this kind of rise to it, yeah, overworking that little thing and it probably just can't hardly do it. 1982, probably been sitting for 30 years at least, down on the tracks, doing what you're supposed to do. Hey, let you guys stick around. Watch this video next.